Welcome to Big Z Sports presentation of playoff high school basketball play-by-play coverage. Tonight in this Division III Region 11 semifinal at the Convo on the campus of Ohio University, the Malvern Hornets take on the McDermott Northwest Monarchs. Tonight's game is presented by Altman, WM Commercial Roofing, Tusker Rawis Insurance Agency, Novellus, Auto Works Collision Center of Strasburg, and DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Now let's head courtside to the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio with Chris Kale, Nick McWilliams, and Shannon Thomas. Welcome to Basketball 30 at the Convo for tonight's Division Three Region 11 semifinal game from Athens on the campus of The Ohio University where the number one seed 26-0 East 1 district champion Malvern Hornets take on the number four seed, the 23-3 Southeast 1 district champion, the Northwest Mohawks. The winner advances to take on the winner of the game after this one it is North Adams and Harvest Prep. That game will be in the Elite Eight on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Coverage brought to you by Novellus, Altman Hospital, WM Commercial Roofing, and the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency. Welcome in to the Wood Electric pregame show. I'm your play-by-play announcer, Chris Kale. Joining me in the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio is my man, Nick McWilliams. All night long, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines, and Adam Sawaski covering social media. The game will be tape delayed on our YouTube channel when we go final and the Clax communications crew is Casey Claxon and Logan McPeak with Natalie Holbrook taking pictures brought to you by Kishman IGA. Nick McWilliams, um, you know, talking about Northwest, they've already played two games in this gymnasium and uh, Malvern has not played down here since 2000. It's going to be a total different look for the shooters down here from Malvern. Yeah, it's something that we've always talked about, and in fact, when we uh, talked with uh, Coach Tucci from Malvern in the pregame, uh, he, he made mention of it as well. It's an entirely kind of different backdrop, which, you know, is something that sometimes I think a lot of people might not necessarily uh, think about overall. Uh, you know, they might be considering it as, you know, has it really going to be that big of a problem? Is it really going to be something that they have to deal with? Well, it is. And it, you'd be amazed yeah. at how long it actually takes you to get used to this. That's part of the reason that they're getting a 35-minute warm-up, yeah. so to speak, uh, in order to try to kind of get used to that backdrop. Because even even for Northwest's sake, you know, we don't know what their gymnasium looks like at home, and they have been here twice. Be that as it may, though, it is an entirely different kind of look. And, you know, if you've never been here to the Convo to watch a game, it's got that deep set back uh, backdrop where you're looking straight into the crowd when you're shooting. And yep. that is something that's kind of hard for a high schooler to it, deal with it sometimes. Is. Yes, it is. And we'll take our first trip to the sidelines. Brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Shannon Thomas, uh, the lower bowl section of this gym, starting to fill up quickly. Uh, even got some people in the upper portion of the bowl. Man, does it get any better than the atmosphere here at the Convo? Hey, guys, I've been here a couple times with you, and the atmosphere is always so great here that we're just standing down here hanging out, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, we're on the air, and I don't even have my headset on, my <laughs> microphone. And I thought, well, i got to go to work, but it's uh, it's great. The, the Malvern fans were pouring in quick, and now the Northwest fans are starting to show up, and uh, it's, it's going to be a great night for basketball. Yes, it is, Shannon Thomas. Down there on the sidelines all night long, again, brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. And, uh, you know, we are struggling with one of the coaches' interviews. Somebody's phone is uh, not capable of sending longer than a uh, than a short interview for some I'll reason. Give, I'll give you a hint. It is not the person who was bu- uh, born almost at the turn of the millennium. It's it, the other person. It is not, but I will give you this clue. The person that was born at almost the turn of the millennium can't even figure out how to get it Who's to Who's the one who's working on it while we're on air, <laughs> Kale? That would be you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Again, uh, l- just looking forward to doing this game here tonight with Nick McWilliams. Shannon Thomas on the sidelines again. Adam Sawesky going to be running around doing social media. Make sure you check out those social media uh, platforms, WTUZ, Big Z Sports, and also on X at Big underscore Z Sports. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. We will be back with our, hopefully, our courtside interviews brought to you by Kime and Justin. Well, we're going to get it happen in one way or another. One way or another, if we have to play Coach Tucci first, we'll play Coach Tucci first. Either way, uh, we're going to come back and have those interviews for you right after this on 99.9 in Clax Communications. 
Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Moteis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Welcome Are you neglecting your building's your fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care Program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover Showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. Ron Rug Automotive has been Malvern's one-stop automotive repair shop since 1999. Ron Rug Automotive is a Napa certified repair shop with ASC certified technicians. Ron Rug Automotive is able to handle any job from oil changes and tire replacements to installing Jasper engines and transmissions. They also offer boat, RV, and trailer repair. Learn more about Ron Rug Automotive by visiting the website ronrugautomotive.com or Find them on Facebook. Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show. I'm Chris Kale. Joining me courtside, built by Kaim, is Northwest head coach Rick Scarberry. Coach, in the districts, you knocked off number five seed Portsmouth in the semis, number one seed Wheelersburg in the finals. Do you think the Mohawks are playing their best basketball of the season right now? Yeah, we, we think so. I mean, you know, we, we've had a tough season. You know, we played some good teams during the year, but Portsmouth predominantly dominant in our area. Uh, Wheelersburg definitely dominant in our area in every sport. Uh, so, yeah, we beat two, what we think is two pretty good quality teams, and we knocked off a good Adena team in the, in the district finals to get here, too. So, or in the sectional finals, I'm sorry. So, yeah, we think we're playing pretty well right now. 
Coach, you start all four of your seniors. Kind of a two-parter. Talk a second about your seniors and all that they've contributed to your program and also your underclassmen having to contribute off the bench. Well, you know, you start with Connor Lentz. Connor's all-state football, basketball, all-around good athlete. You know, he's a little injury prone. He's been hurt some this year. He's probably missed four games. We were able to still win those games without him, and that's because of those underclassmen I'll talk about in a minute. Then you got Tanner Bowling. Tanner had a game this year where Connor was out. He dropped 50. I mean, had a heck of a ball game. Uh, put some time in. Uh, Jay Jenkins, Defensive Player of the Year in our league this year, was Defensive Player of the Year in the league last year. Very good on-ball defender. Can shoot it when we need it, and there's had games where he stepped up and knocked down some shots. Free throws, shoots well. Um, Caleb Lewis, first team All-State in soccer, first team region soccer. He's wow. a soccer yeah. player, brother, and he's pretty impressive, but he does what he needs to do on the basketball court for us. He's a rebounder, a defender. You know, he'll guard their best big tonight. And so all these kids, those four guys have put time into the program. And we got back to school the other night after beating Wheelersburg, and they left in waste till 1130. Wow. You know, they go back, they get in the gym, they go work out, and they do their thing, and I let them and they lead this team. And then Logan Wolfenbark is an underclassman that started for us as a freshman. He had a big game against Portsmouth, four threes early in the first half that got us back into the game because we were a little flat coming out. But you know, for us, you guys know where we're from. You know, this is the first time our school's been this far in ever, you know, and we don't get to too many district opportunities uh, anyway. But those guys contribute, and then we come off the bench with another sophomore, Ethan Crabtree, and Ethan's had some big games for us. Some nights he plays, some nights he doesn't. It just depends on what, who we're guarding and what we're trying to do. And Ivan Ely's a freshman kid that has been coming off for us to give us a little rest at the guard spot. We don't play a lot of bodies, but these kids are tough, they're resilient, and, and we try to rest legs. The last two days we went really through the light, you know, just for this. Bigger floor, wider floor, big crowd, great, yep. great venue. And uh, so those kids, I think they're all ready. And, you know, tournament time, you never know what you're going to get. You know, I played in college, so there's night if you don't play well in tournament, you're out. Yep. So you don't know what's going to happen, but you, I, always, I always know my effort's going to be there. Coach, an undefeated Malvern team stands in your way tonight. Talk about how you'll defend them at one end and attack them at the other. Well, I mean, depending on what they do, they mix their defenses up. They press a lot. We feel like we can handle that. You know, uh, we got three kids that can really handle the ball, and we'll finish on the other end you know, as long as we don't get sped up. And I know that's what we're going to try to do, but we'll, we'll think we can handle that. Uh, you know, defensively, it starts at the point. It always starts at the point. They've got a nice point guard, number 10. they got some big kid that can shoot it. We're not changing anything we do for anybody. We play man-to-man -man defense, and that's what we're going to do. Now, we may adjust a little bit out there and sag off a guy or two here and there, handle pick and rolls and stuff a little different. You know, Wheelersburg pick and roll heavy, and I thought our kids did a great job limiting uh, the Lattimore kid because he's a player. So we just, we're just going to keep doing what we do. That half-court defense is going to be solid. We can go full if we need to, but uh, you know, we don't play a lot of bodies. you got to watch that. Right. So, so, yeah, that's how we'll attack them. We know we got to do a good job boxing and Hey, it's tournament basketball. You're in the regionals. You better do all those things. You're not going to beat anybody. Absolutely, Coach. Finally, Coach, what needs to happen uh, to hand them their first loss of the season and advance to the Elite Eight on Saturday? we got to score more than they do. <laughs> no, we got to defend like we have all year. We usually hold people in the 30s and 40s. Uh, so we got to defend, keep that score down there. we got to handle their pressure and the mixing up of the defenses. But that's where my seniors hopefully can, you know, that experience will pay off. These kids have all played since they were freshman sophomores and we got to rebound the ball and we got to make shots i mean at bottom line you play all the d you want we've got to put it in a hole and we're gonna to have to make free throws coach thank you for your time good luck tonight we appreciate you thank you that was mohawks head coach rick scarberry built by kime when we return to the convo nick mcwilliams will be joined by malvern head coach dennis tucci right after this on 99.9 and clocks communications Roofing and Exterior Product Services of Ohio, or REPS, has serviced the roofing and construction industry since 1988. REPS and its team of professionals represent several of the major commercial roofing, continuous building insulation, exterior product, rain screen assembly, concrete, and waterproofing manufacturers in the Midwest. Their roofing, exterior, and waterproofing divisions work seamlessly together to help you create a complete building envelope. REPS is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornets Athletics and wishes them the best of luck in tonight's game. This is Jordan Hartzler. At Hartzler's Quality Housing, our goal is to help customers achieve the dream of home ownership. 
We have been a family-owned, affordable housing business for over 40 years. We value our customers and have the knowledge and experience to help you walk through the home buying process from start to finish. Conveniently located just off I-77 in New Philadelphia, stop by and browse their model homes or learn more by visiting harslers.com. Pieces with Purpose is a custom apparel and decal shop located in Carrollton. They are devoted to promoting independence, purpose, and confidence for their family and community members facing developmental disabilities and the struggles those bring. They do this through custom apparel pieces, sports gear, and window vehicle decals. Pieces with Purpose offers vinyl, embroidery, screen printing, and digitally printed designs. See all Pieces with Purpose offers by visiting PiecesWithPurposeCustomTees.com. Pieces with Purpose is a proud supporter of the Malvern Hornets. Your local one-stop shop, Rocky, is offering a full-service auto and truck repair shop at the Waynesburg location. You can schedule your appointment today by calling 330-866-5501. If you need a tow, they have that too. Stop into any of the three convenience store locations, Waynesburg, Malvern, or Minerva, to fill up the tank and enjoy a hot cup of coffee. Rocky's has been family-owned for almost 50 years, and they would like to thank you for your continued support. And from everyone on Rocky's team, go Hornets! The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team is founded on trust, integrity, discretion, and a total commitment to maximizing the value of your home with 100% satisfaction. Working together, Robin and Melanie have found their diverse neighborhood knowledge and savvy business skills to be perfect complements in finding their clients the perfect fit in their home buying experience. To learn more, visit ClarkKitterTeam.CutlerHomes.com. The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team would like to wish the best of luck to the Malvern Hornets in tonight's game. The Contini Insurance Agency knows that shopping insurance isn't always fine, but they strive to make the experience a little less painful. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or recreational vehicles, as an independent insurance agency, they will make recommendations for the coverage you need at a price you can afford, with multiple companies and options available to best suit each situation. To learn more about the Contini Insurance Agency, visit ContiniInsurance.com. The Contini Insurance Agency is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornet Athletics. Fishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Fishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events in their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. Do you have property you'd like to have cleared? Do you know the value of standing timber? Well, Millwood Lumber in Janaden Hutton is a buyer of standing timber and land across Ohio. Millwood Lumber also offers two convenient ways of purchasing firewood. Prepackaged bark-free firewood producing less creosote, ash, debris, and bugs providing convenience for you. Or you can purchase bulk firewood by the truckload. Learn more about Millwood Lumber. Visit millwoodlumberinc.com. Welcome back into your Wood Electric pregame show as we go courtside with the coach brought to you by Kime. It is regional semifinal action from the Convocation Center on the beautiful Ohio University in Athens. We're talking with Malvern Hornets head coach Dennis Tucci. Coach, as uh, we were just talking there uh, before we started off here, been a little while since you guys have been back down here at Athens. We know how much that district championship meant to you guys. Run me through the uh, kind of emotions as that game went final. I mean, I think the entire village was out there to celebrate with you guys. No doubt about it. You know, it's it's been seven years, so it's been quite a while. We, that was our seventh district title dating back to 96. And 96 and 2000, we got to come here. And then in 08 and 14, 16 and 17, we went to went to the field house. So it's good to be back here. The green team and the green gym. Uh, our, our, our town is just ecstatic, as are the players. Uh, these are lifelong memories. They'll never forget this weekend, that's for sure. Now you come down here, obviously, uh, we get to the time of the year, you know, we go in tournament basketball, win or go home. Uh, it just feels like as the lower the, or the less teams that are in there, it feels like the pressure could be turned up a little bit. So what have you guys been talking about with your players to try to calm those nerves a little bit and get ready for this matchup? We just look at it as an, another opportunity to show more people how good we are. Uh, that's what our kids, I mean, we talk about that with our kids, no nerves necessary, we keep, we keep saying, because uh, we're, we're a dang on good team, and we want to make sure the state of Ohio knows that. 
Well, we certainly do, Coach, and we've been having so much fun uh, following you guys around this season. Looking across the court uh, in the north in the Northwest uh, Mohawks, uh, tell me a little bit about them. I know this is obviously a team from uh, down on the river. You guys, I don't really think, have too much in terms of knowledge other than the game film, but what have you been talking about with them? Well, I, actually, I got to see them live twice, and then we've seen them on film, of course, a few times. Uh, solid, solid team. Four seniors. Uh, two of which are 1,000-point scorers, number one and number 12. Uh, we know those two kids can play, Bolin and Lentz, and, and the other players are good. They haven't shown up. Uh, they use their bench very often. We've seen them in strictly half-court man, haven't seen any zone, haven't seen any pressure. Uh, obviously for us, we have to be able to pressure them to find any success at all, and you really can't see that. When you're watching them live, when you're watching them on film, until that first minute or two when our guys are guarding their guys and we're trapping and rotating and seeing how they respond to that, that will dictate how the game's going to go and we'll have to adjust after that. And I do have to ask, because I think it's every single time we have any team that's down here, they always want to get their players out on the court as soon as they possibly can because the backdrop, it's a little bit different from what everybody's kind of used to. Anything you guys have discussed related to that? Well, I just told them we can't shoot anyway, so what's the difference? <laughs> but we did stop at Marietta College today and shot for about a half hour. Kids got down the floor a little bit, and uh, they enjoyed that. And now they're coming here, and uh, we'll, we'll get on the floor. We'll get 30 minute warm up instead of the usual 20. So that'll help too, get used to shooting on those, uh, on those, uh, like you say, that background with the open on the backside. Now, Coach, I do have to ask too, before we get started here, just the last question I had for you. Uh, and by far and away, you guys had a lot of great contributions all over the court again in the district championship. And I know I keep asking you about this during the tournaments, and I know what your answer is going to be, but I have to do it anyway. How vital is it going to be for you guys once again to have that output from multiple different players and everybody moving the ball as well as they have? Well, it's who we are. And, uh, and, and people comment, and the teams we play comment, and my goodness, Coach, you guys have so many weapons. And, and that's crucial for us. And uh, and, and, and I'm hoping the same thing happens tonight. Our, we love our five starters, but Dre Hutcherson and, and Eric Swain off the bench. And if we need a defensive guard for a minute or two, we got Evan Debo. If we need a defensive uh, big guy for a minute, we got Jordan Detchen. So we feel good about that, uh, especially tonight maybe, because we're not so sure that uh, Northwest has a lot of depth. So um, hopefully in that big court, but, uh, that we can get to him a little bit. Well, thank you as always for your time, Coach. Good luck. Appreciate it, Nick. I appreciate it. Head coach Dennis Tucci for the Malvern Hornets brought to you by Kimes. Stay tuned. We got more of your Wood Electric pregame show and tip off from the convo is on the way with Big Z Sports. We got them, don't we? Sammy Sue's Barbecue on Front Street in Dover offers a menu full of house smoked meats, including choices like ribs, chicken, steak, and pork. Sammy Sue's takes pride in knowing that everything on the menu is made fresh in their kitchen with the freshest ingredients. Sammy's also offers a variety of specials all week long, including the popular wing nights every Tuesday and Thursday. Find Sammy Sue's Barbecue on Facebook for a full list of daily specials and everything they have to offer. This is Brian Williams, commercial lender with the First National Bank of Denison. The day you decided to open your business, you planted the seed. As your roots become stronger, the First National Bank of Denison is here to help your business grow. Strong businesses make strong communities, and because we live, work, and raise our families here, your business benefits us all. Whether you need more space, equipment, or inventory, come see us today for your next business loan. We are a local bank with local decision makers, and your success is our greatest reward. At the First National Bank of Denison, we have our roots where others have their branches. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 Littles with Bigs. 
We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Welcome back into the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio as we roll right along with your Wood Electric pregame show. Regional semi-final action on the way. It's the Malvern Hornets taking on the Northwest Mohawks. And it's time for our Needenthal and company keys to the game. And I'll start things off with Northwest. As you already heard from Coach Scarberry, you know, this isn't necessarily something that they're that used to. He says they don't necessarily make it to the district rounds all that often. So when you're coming in here, one of your biggest keys that I think you're going to have to have early on, don't panic under pressure. We know it's already immense pressure considering it's the regional rounds. You're one of the last 16 teams left in the state in your division. You know that you're going to want to come out and do uh, your absolute best to get a victory. However, you know the Malvern Hornets are going to be pressing. They're going to try to force you into mistakes. You're just going to have to weather that storm in the first half, see some things open up that maybe you can exploit in the second. Absolutely. And uh, I have the Needenthal Company keys to the game. For the Malvern Hornets, you want to create chaos. Screens, get some good backdoor looks. You need to get offensive rebounds, get them in foul trouble, good shooting percentage, force turnovers. Create chaos with your full court pressure. Don't force shots if you go cold. You get on a little chilly streak, don't worry about it. Slow it down and get a good shot at the offensive end. And finally, for the Malvern Hornets, get into their bench, meaning the Mohawks bench. They don't go very deep. You want to wear them down. Look for the full court offense and defense out of the Malvern Hornets. Those are your Needenthal and Company keys to the game. When we return, it'll be time for our Wayne Door starting lineups right after this on Big Z Sports. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PAC drilling.com the Tuscarawas County dairy farmers want you to know that low fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student athletes and hard workers it provides the nutrition needed after practices games or a hard day at work and it tastes great low fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy proteins to repair muscles fluids to rehydrate plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies it's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association Tuscarawas County dairy farmers farms family food 
This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Finding your perfect vehicle can be frustrating. The selection process, working out a deal, the pushy salespeople. Well, Sarsha and Ford of Leansburg takes away all of those frustrations by offering transparent pricing, a large new and pre-owned inventory, and salespeople that you'll consider a friend by the time your sale is complete. Sarsha and Ford of Leansburg is proud to have won the Ford President's Award three consecutive years based solely on that customer satisfaction. And you can see the difference at 300 West Lisbon Street in Waynesburg or at sarshanofwaynesburg.com, where community and customers always come first. Jeff Wallach, LLC, is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach, LLC, is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400? Thad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Electric pregame show as tip off is just moments away from the Convocation Center, the regional semifinals, the Sweet 16. It's here. The Malvern Hornets take on the Northwest Mohawks. And I'll start with your Wayne Door starting lineups for Northwest. A senior standing at six foot two. He's number one and he's a guard. It's Connor Lentz. Then it's number 10, a fellow senior and a guard standing at six foot tall. It's Jay Jenkins. Six foot three senior forward, number 12, Tanner Bolin. Rounding things out for them is number 23, a sophomore, six foot four forward. It's Logan Wolfenbarker. All right, for the Malvern Hornets, head coached by Dennis Tucci. They are the number one seed out of the East One District. They are 26 and 0, 12 and 0 as the IBC North champions. Their starting lineups brought to you by Wayne Door. 6'2 senior Dylan Phillips wears number three. Number 10, Jay Allen Barino, a Mr. Basketball Ohio nominee, stands six foot three and a senior. Number 11, Rodney Smith, a 6'2 junior. 6'5", senior Mitchell Miner wears number 21. And the man in the middle, number 22, Jared Witherow, a 6'5", junior. Guess what? It is just about basketball 30 in the combo. Does it get any better, Nick? It never does, and I'll tell you what. We already know from this region what comes out of these regions and these matchups in Division Three. It's some hard-nosed basketball. We know the Malvern Hornets are not going to shy away from contact. They haven't all year. They never do under head coach Dennis Tucci. On the other side of things, though, for the Northwest Mohawks, under head coach Rick Scarberry, something I noticed during the pregame that was very interesting, 
as they were practicing down on the low blocks and getting used to that contact, getting yep. ready to try to finish through contact. They got the Muay Thai pads out, yep. and you were getting the body contact and the arm contact from there. You think they're going to be messing around at all when it comes to the paint? No, I, I think that uh, this could be a very physical game. Obviously, you're going to have Malvern full court pressure. They're going to want to turn up the pace, turn up the juice. When you look at Northwest, they're going to sit back and they are going to, you know, sit back into their man-to-man -man defense, half-court defense, not full court because they don't go very deep on the bench. Those are some of our Neen Tone Company keys to the game moving forward. And uh, Shannon Thomas, this place is getting loud down there. Yeah, it's getting loud down here, guys. And, and one of the things that you brought up, we were talking to a guy that has got to watch the Northwest team play down here the last couple times they played, and he said that they can shoot the lights out. And if they're hitting, it could be a long night for Malvern. But we kind of brought up the press. We're like, Malvern likes to press. He's like, well, I don't know if I've seen anybody put a press on them yet, so I really can't tell if they can handle a press or not. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when this game starts. Something that's very interesting from that, too, we saw that press from Malvern that's so deadly actually get broken a lot by Martins Ferry in the district championship game, put some pressure on Malvern not only to rotate quicker on defense but also knock down more of their shots and be more patient. We'll see if that factors in today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Shannon. We'll be going trips to the sidelines brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. It is basketball 30 in the convo. The Malvern Hornets wearing the green uniforms, white numerals Malvern across the chest. They'll be moving from left to right and the Northwest Mohawks are in the home whites, blue numerals trimmed in red and the tip up and we are underway, ready to go and Northwest will start with the basketball. They bring it across the timeline. Over here is Caleb Lewis on the left wing. We'll shoot it into Wolfenbarker. Now they'll swing it back around the perimeter. Connor Lentz, number one, has it on the right wing. Swing it around. Again, looking, being patient, man-to-man -man defense, a little bit of switch man out of the Malvern Hornets, and a nice cutting drive by Connor Lentz to the basket. Two to nothing. Northwest, that was a nice move. It certainly was, and you saw what Northwest was trying to do there, create confusion on the Malvern defense. Nobody stopped moving that entire offensive possession. So Withero has it left wing. He'll kick it top of the key to Smith, and now they'll swing it around Jay Allen Barino. Barino to Mitchell Miner. Miner back on the left wing. A little bit of contact and a ticky-tack foul over there. We'll have to wait and see, Nick, who that one's on. Looks like it's going to be on Caleb Lewis. That'll be his first team's first. And that's kind of an indication there. They might not be letting a whole lot of arm checking going away. 7-13 to play. 2 to nothing. Northwest Malvern's first offensive possession. Jay Allen Barino has it out near the Ohio Bobcat logo. He'll swing it in. This is Rodney Smith on the low block. Shot up and in. A good ball fake, and now that allows Malvern to get into their press. Withero in the backcourt along with Smith, and now a good job by Northwest to break that press. Into the lane. Connor Lentz with the floater. They break the press very nicely, and Lentz with the floater in the lane. 4-2, 6.47 to play. Barino, right wing, and he threw it off of Miner and out of bounds. First turnover of the ball game. It goes to Malvern, and I think uh, Jay Allen thought Mitchell was going to stay there. Mitchell thought Jay Allen wanted him to cut. Yeah, a little nervous to start the game. Not that uncommon to see, but so far Northwest has been doing a great job not only with the press the few times they've seen it. How about Jay Jenkins? He's got two assists already on those two made shots by Lentz. With the basketball, a shot up Tanner Bowen, shot up no good, and a nice hustle for the offensive rebound. It was tipped over to Bowen. Bowen now gives it back to Lewis. Lewis had that tip to Wolfenbarker in the corner. Tanner Bowen. Bowen will swing it around. Almost a three-point shot there by Jenkins. He turned it down. A deep three by Bowen Ooh. is good. That's NBA range. That was deep. Tanner Bowen puts Northwest up 7-2, to two, approaching the six-minute mark. And Jay Allen Marino, a lot of contact, and it's stolen away. Good steal. And a block Ooh. by Barino. Jenkins got the steal. He came the other way and got it thrown right back in his face there by Barino. Barino was almost able to retain possession, too, and keep it Malvern ball. That's what you want to see out of Jay Allen. After you make a mistake like that, hustle back, make sure there's no easy bucket. So both teams just feeling each other out. 7-2 to two early going. In the first quarter, Northwest with the 7-2 lead. On the low block, shot up no good, rebounded by Withero. Quickly the other way is Rodney Smith. Smith up the left side into the lane, he lost it. Marino got it back, we've got a jump ball. Possession should be Malvern, unless and there was a foul call. There it is, okay. Yep, it is. 
Jay Allen Marino on the floor, as well as Connor Lentz. A pair of seniors going at it, senior leaders for their respective teams. You got to love what you saw out of Withrow down here on the defensive side. He had two Northwest players around him. He still fought through it and did not have any easy bucket either. Jay Allen couldn't get the inbound from Miner, or for, I'm sorry, from Phillips. Now Jay Allen Marino to the cup on the baseline and scores. Jay Allen Marino cuts the lead to three for Northwest with 5.30 to play. Quickly up the floor and a steal by Phillips. First Northwest turnover, Dylan Phillips into the lane. Beautiful scoop shot, no good. Offensive rebound, Witherow. Shot up by wow. Rodney Smith is good. And Jared Witherow with the rebound in the dime to Rodney Smith. The other way, here is Lewis. Three-point shot, air ball, rebounded by Barino. 7-6, to six, Northwest in front, Malvern basketball. Here comes Dylan Phillips behind the back into the lane. Thought better of it, goes right wing to Barino. Jay Allen tried to back down his defender and thought better of it. That was Jay Jenkins, and now Rodney Smith will slow things down. 4.53 to play. Interesting first quarter. Witherow has it, swings it to Barino. Jay Allen Barino, a little jab step. Now we'll go towards the baseline into the lane. Shot up off the window, no good. Oh, but wow. Dylan Phillips right there, he missed it. Phillips the second shot, he missed it again. Barino, the offensive board, he said, I'll take <laughs> care of the first one I missed and put it in in the first lead for Malvern at 8-7. Phillips Quick. is going to be mad at himself, but he should not be. That, that <laughs> hustle, he stayed with it. There's, that's part of the reason they got those points on the board. A couple of substitutions going to happen for Malvern at the next break. Three-point shot by Lentz. Off the rim, no good. Witherow, another rebound. Jared Witherow has been a glass cleaner. They think they should sponsor, Windex should sponsor him. <laughs> Three-point shot. Mitchell oh. Miner finds the bottom from way downtown. Timeout Northwest. 11 to 7, 4.05 to play first quarter. Malvern storms out to a four point lead. Back after this on Big Z Sports. Altman is here for you in your community because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team joined together and committed to one mission to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Welcome back to Ohio University and uh, Nick, 9-0 run that Malvern's on right now. This is why we've seen the Hornets have so much success. They find themselves in a hole early. They fire right back with multiple possessions in a row that are just exactly executed how Coach Tucci wants to see them. Down to the sideline with Shane and Thomas brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Malvern about came unglued over those past few possessions. Yeah, and Coach Tucci was happy with the way they were rotating around on defense. Caught a little, you know, havoc for them. And that's kind of what Stubble Northwest, interesting thing that they come over to the official, warned the bench over here, said, hey, after you guys make a basket, before we get back to half court, your bench better be sitting back on the seats. They're not allowed to be standing. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Mitchell Miner for three again. Got it again! <laughs> Mitchell Miner from way downtown, two in a row, after the Tanner Bullen make at this end when we were talking to Shannon. Again, that trip to the sidelines brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Into the lane as Bolin, his shot is up and good. Tanner Bolin with a quick four. And it's 11, or 14 to 11, Malvern in front. 3-11 to play. Drake Hutchison into the basketball game. He has the basketball over to Phillips. Phillips, foul line jumper, good. Wow. Dylan Phillips nails the foul line jumper. Also, Eric Swain into the basketball game for Malvern as well. I will never understand how this Malvern team is so good at body control on those mid-range jumpers. Phillips was running through his right. All the momentum going that direction. Somehow hung in the air long enough to get that online and bury it. A little bit of zone defense now as Barino is going to kick it. Zone defense out of Malvern. First time they've checked into that. Checking in. Jay Jenkins back in. Checking back out. I don't have a five on my roster for Northwest. I'll have uh, Nick uh, check num that one out. Number five would be Ethan Crabtree, a 5'10 uh, sophomore guard. Looks so Malvern like has wholesale substitutions. With the rows in, looks like Evan Debo on the court for the first time, and I believe it is Rodney Smith who's back in now. So with the basketball, Northwest in the backcourt, moving it into the front court is Jenkins across the timeline, and it's almost stolen away by Rodney Smith. 
You saw the Malvern bench trying to plead their case and say it was uh, Wolfenbarker who knocked it out, but still good hustle play out of Smith. You just want to get make them think about making that pass next time. Absolutely. Inbounding the basketball is Wolfenbarker. He gets it back and then goes into the corner to Bolin. Bolin in the right corner by the Malvern bench, being guarded by Witherow. Oh. Witherow threw it away. Keeping the basketball are the Mohawks. Caleb Lewis thought about three, let the ball go, have no idea. Do you think he let it go good there? Uh, he, so what he did there, instead of putting up the shot, he, went, he threw it down on the court and actually started his dribble and then drove the lane and pulled up for the ju good jumper. That's a lot of high basketball IQ play right there. Debo into the basketball game. He's going to have the three-point shot on the wing. Rattles around, no good. Witherow tips it right to Rodney Smith for the left-handed floater, and it's good, and the foul. The hoop and the harm for Rodney Smith. It's 18-13, Honitz. This is once again what we're seeing out of Withrow down there. He's not necessarily the volume scorer for Malvern underneath. He's got four rebounds in this first quarter, though, and he is doing a lot in cleaning the glass and keeping Malvern in the possession of the ball or at least keeping uh, Northwest off the defense or the offensive glass. At the basketball or at the free throw line. <laughs> at the, the first basketball federal, line. Right, at the basketball line. The first Federal Community Bank foul line is Rodney Smith. He makes the first of the foul shots at the first Federal Community Bank foul line of the basketball game is what I was trying to get out. 19-13, Malvern in front, and Jared Witherow, like you were talking about, looks like a different ball player. I saw him earlier in the year, and I'm like, man, he, I think he should get more rebounds than he does. You've seen him a lot more lately. Looks like a total different ball player than, than early on in the year. Well, it's all body positioning. He's done just a fantastic job of finding where he's supposed to be on the court as a three-point shot is going way long for Northwest. Rebound, Lentz offensively, and he'll put it back up and in over with the rope. So the three-point shot, Wolfenbarker, the 6'4", sophomore, missed that one badly, but Lentz doing what Lentz does for Northwest, and now uh, was Johnny on the spot and knocked it in on the stick back. Phillips in the corner by the Northwest bench. He'll go back to Jay Allen Marino. 107 to play. Miner has it. Going to try and drive the lane, and now they're going to call a foul on Dylan Phillips. That'll be the third Malvern turnover by my count. Checking back in is Ethan Crabtree. Also, as a reminder, after this game on the Big Z Sports Facebook page, you can see the hard work for uh, Natalie Holbrook. She's taking pictures of this game, all thanks to Kishman's IGA. You get some of the moments from this game. Natalie does such a great job. Absolutely, she does uh, impressive work. She does a lot of stuff for uh, Casey as well on this end. Bringing the basketball up the floor. The Mohawks have it. Full court pressure again by Malvern, and they turn it over. Second Northwest turnover. Rodney Smith with the steal. Smith into the front court. Baseline off oh the window. Boy. No good. But he's going to get the foul. And he'll head over to the First Federal Community Bank foul line. I was just wondering if that foul was going to get called or not because Smith was already laying on the court by the time they blew the whistle. Uh, we have to thank as well some of the uh, sponsors jumping on for this game, like Ron Rug Automotive, Roofing and Exterior Products and Services, and Hartzler's Quality Housing. Their support is what brings you high school basketball in Z Country. First shot is up and good by Rodney Smith. Malvern remains 2-4-2 two, two here in the first quarter. 49 seconds left. Malvern by five. Rodney Smith looking to push it to six and does not. I put the kibosh on him. And now we kind of got another ticky-tack foul there as Withero's going to get called, I think, trying to battle for that board. Yeah, Jenkins gets the rebound, and Shannon... Officials, it, it, look, we've said it all year long. As long as they call it consistent, then we're fine with it. But don't change the way you're calling it, you know, as we get into the second half. Yeah, you know, and they've done a good job. There was a couple of fouls that were legit fouls. And there was the two ticky-tack fouls like right there. Witherow's feet just got tangled up with the other guy's feet when he landed. But then he rolled his body against him, so that's why they called it. Lentz wow. into the lane, and he's going to get the, scoot, or the, uh, the hoop and the harm. And I didn't see that there was much harm there. Nick? So Phillips might have made contact with him. It was mostly with the body. It would not have been with the arm. But regardless, there was enough contact to warrant the whistle, I guess, from the uh, for the officials there on that one. But given, like Shannon said, in terms of how some of these fouls have gone, I'm surprised that that one got called. But I have to say, step into the foul line and Lentz, uh, I don't remember the last time I saw a high school point guard with that good of a mustache. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I'm <laughs> telling you. You as a fireman would, uh, should be proud of that thing. Yeah, I am a little proud of that one as he gets the N1. First 
Free throw opportunity for Northwest at the First Federal Community Bank foul line. Cuts the lead to two with 38 seconds left and something to keep an eye on. Two fouls on Dylan Phillips, uh, the senior from Malvern. Don't want to get him a third here in the first half. Jay Allen Barino, wow. a lot of contact as he gets into the lane. Jay Allen being guarded by Jay Jenkins, and Jenkins all over him, and they're not calling it. Jay Allen, ooh, a lot of ooh. contact. He slid down. Looks like he's going to be fine, but he's going to head to the foul line. Barino got taken yeah. out on the upper body, and he came down on a flat back on a basketball court. If you've never done that before, it might not look too bad because the players jump right back up, but you're feeling that through your entire body. Yeah, absolutely. Who was that foul on? I didn't. Catch the number. I uh, did not. It was either going to be on Lentz or I think it might have been Jenkins who was down low. We'll have to wait and see when it's updated on the board. First one from Marino is going to clang in and out. So Jay Allen Marino misses another one as Hutchinson back in. Actually, I think they called the foul on Wolfenbarker. That'd okay. be his first. There was a lot of pl Northwest players. Yeah, there was. There. <laughs> no kidding. Jay Allen Marino with it. Second shot is up and good. At the first Federal Community Bank foul line, Malvern three of five. They have the three-point lead, 17 seconds, full court pressure. Mohawks have the basketball. Wolf and Barker right wing, 10 seconds. He'll go into Lentz. Lentz in the corner. Three-point <laughs> shot is buried, and we're knotted at 21. Four seconds. Barino into the front court. Two seconds. J. Allen Barino shot up no good. And we are going to end the first quarter the way we started. We are tied at 21. Back to the convo after this on Big Z Sports. Hi, I'm Zach Motais with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care Program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Welcome back to Ohio University. Chris Kale, Nick McWilliam, Shannon Thomas here with you. The Mohawks will start with the basketball. We'll head down to the sideline. Shannon Thomas brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. What do the coaches have to say after the first quarter? In the Malvern huddle. There you go, call that one. Wolfenbarker with an easy jumper there to start quarter number two. Go ahead, Shannon. In the Malvern huddle, coach said, hey, let's keep putting pressure on them, put pressure on them, let's see if we can get them tired. Over here in the Northwest huddle, coach said, hey, we're right where we need to be. And he, he was kind of showing them different ways to break that screen to score or to press to break, score more points. All right, thank you very much, Shannon. And uh, Jared Witherow gets the little left baby hook to get the stick back there, and we're knotted at 23. And that full court pressure really hasn't bothered Northwest other than maybe one time. You could not have that timed time. that up better. <laughs> Rodney Smith gets the third turnover. I think that's his second or third steal. Mitchell oh Miner. Oh. Mitchell Miner from downtown. He is shooting, I think he's three for three, and Malvern is scorching at 77%. He is dropping a foot farther back every single time, and when I say that was about three foot behind what a NBA three-pointer is, I am not exaggerating. Yeah, that was from East Liverpool over there on the <laughs> Ohio logo. Wow. Wolfenbarker with it. He'll kick it in the corner to Crabtree. They'll swing it around the perimeter. Jenkins has it. Now into the corner, a little jump stop for Bolin. He kicks it to Wolfenbarker, who throws up a bad brick, and it's rebounded by Rodney Smith. Smith up the left side across the Ohio Bobcat logo midcourt. Dylan Phillips with it, left wing. Back to Rodney Smith behind the three-point line, standing on the NBA line, three-point <laughs> shot. No way. Minor, no good. He moved in too close. He's a little too close for that one as he misses the first one, and that drops their scorching percentage to 71 and a half now <laughs> for Malvern. Right now shooting 62 and a half percent from the floor is Northwest. Flip that. <laughs> oh, my bad, sorry. 
Lentz out three to Wolfenbarker. Three-point shot, Wolfenbarker. Three, no good, and Miner has the rebound. Sorry, my bad. I didn't uh, I didn't get what side that was on. I'm not paying attention to the scoreboard <laughs> enough, I guess. So with the basketball is Jay Allen Barino, right wing to Dylan Phillips. Phillips over to Witherow, top of the key. Witherow to Jay Allen Barino, right beside head coach Rick Scarberry. Here comes into the oh, lane. Wow. And Rodney Smith had it swatted away as he gets into the lane, and here comes Lentz. Lentz into the lane. He's going to get the contact. See, Barino's question here, I mean, Coach Tucci is hot because he isn't happy that Barino yeah, came down over the top, but I think what Barino's question is is Lentz did that same right. thing on the other end. It, only, only difference here is Lentz caught ball, Barino caught arm. 100% is, uh, you know, the call didn't go both ways there on the exact same situation at one end of the floor as it went at the other. At the foul line now, Connor Lentz, a 6'2 senior. His first shot up, planks off of the left side of the rim and no good. Their first missed free throw from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. And checking in is Caleb Lewis back in. Crabtree is going to take a seat. Crabtree will sit down. Thank you very much for that, Nick. 26-23, trying to cut the lead to two is Lentz at the foul line. Lentz's second shot is up and good. They are two for three from the foul line is Northwest. All from Lentz. 26-24, 5.20 to play first half. Jay Allen Barino across the Bobcat. Whiskers to the right. He'll get it in, and this is Miner. Miner on the low block. Couldn't get it to go. Witherow tried to get the offensive rebound and tip it to himself. Tipped it too hard. It went out of bounds. Good call down there. It was right in front of Shannon Thomas and Adam Sawaski and that was a good call. Oh, Shannon moved. <laughs> Shannon, where'd you go? Yeah, I moved down here. I get a little closer to Coach Tucci. <laughs> Why, uh, you don't might want to not want to do that. He tends to throw water bottles and things. <laughs> Northwest back with the basketball. Caleb Lewis, nice feed in and a left a, a jumper punch short out. was Jenks, Jenkins. And yeah, it was a good punch out. Jenkins just kind of short armed that one. Linson Jenkins out front. Now Lewis with it left wing. Lewis will dribble with the right hand. They'll swing it around. Lentz has it right wing, right in front of the scorer's table. He'll hand off to Tanner Bolin. Now back to Lentz. Connor Lentz, a 6'2 senior. Their leader. Something I'm noticing with Northwest, they are not living on the baseline. They are staying out high, and they're trying to create all these cutting lanes. Yeah, they absolutely are, and almost getting it away was Rodney Smith, and I actually think that might have went off of Jenkins. It was a little late there. Shannon, your call, you're right behind right, their yeah, bench. Right in front of you. I'm telling you guys, it was close. I mean, I would have to go with the official on this one. He was standing straight in front of me. I mean, it, it was close enough to his fingertips. You might have been able to slide a piece of paper in between it. All right, thank you very much, Shannon Thomas. Again, those trips to the sidelines all night long. See what I did there? <laughs> Brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Wolf and Barker has it on Toledo. <laughs> Shot is up, and I thought it was going to be good there by Lentz. And rebounded was Drake Hutchison, and he stepped on the end line. That's a good call. Oh, it I, was I looked close. down. Yeah. It, it was close, but you know what? Drake Hutchison did step on the end line. Third Malvern turnover. Shannon? Yeah, yeah, guys. What happened was is two players come down in front of him, and he stepped on the end line to go around and get the ball, and he never reestablished himself before he touched it. Yep, I agree. Shot up and no good. Rebounded by Barino. Caleb Lewis, a shot no good. Drake Hutchison into the lane. He's going to draw the foul, and he's going to head to the first Federal Community Bank foul line. Kind of what Drake Hutchison has been doing late in the going is uh, just creating stuff. Well, we saw him in the district championship. You know, Ferry was letting him wide open from three-point range. They knew he was not necessarily a threat from out there. Hutchison made him pay for that, though, giving him that extra cushion, and he was finding those cutting lanes. There he's short arms the first one, and he misses, so... It'll stay at a 26-24 ball game. But regardless for Hutchison, he's played some incredibly valuable minutes for this team uh, throughout this postseason run so far. So maybe a little shooter's jitters there at the free throw line. We'll see what happens here. Second shot, back of the rim. Wow. With a row on the spot. He gets it. Minor for three. Off the back of the rim, no good. So Malvern gets the second chance opportunity as Hutchison misses both from the foul line. And Northwest gets the rebound. Wolfenbarker has it. He'll give it off to Lentz. Lentz, top of the key. Wolfenbarker, left wing. Lentz will pull it back out now. Now a little zone trap as they use Hutchison to drive back and forth. And then we've got a, a, a carry. carry. Yep. Yeah. 
So that double team that in the zone when they backed out to that corner, what ended up happening is the Jenkins thought the lane was going to be there, but all of a sudden it sealed off so quick out on the side, he decided to try to just put it back down on the court, but he had his hand under the ball already. Uh, stripes were right there to see that, and they're going to get it every single time if you're trying to ma if you make it that obvious. Yeah, absolutely. Good uh, good way of explaining that one, Nick. As Jay Allen Barino standing on the Ohio University logo. He'll jab step to the left, go back to the right, into the lane, and he's fouled. So Jay Allen Barino going to head back to the foul line here. I think they're going to say Jenkins kind of shoved him out of the lane, got him across the wrist as well. Both teams. It was hit. not on the shot, though, Chris. Oh, it wasn't. So it was on the floor. So Malvern going to inbound from the baseline. Both teams shooting 56% from the floor. Malvern with the basketball. Rodney Smith, left lane, and Lint's going to get a call. And look, I ain't going to feel bad for Northwest there because Malvern's had some calls like that down here. So we'll take it down there. You actually saw Coach Scarberry from Northwest. He was talking to Lintz and saying, hey, man, you made contact. They're yep. going to blow the whistle. you got to play tough defense, but you yep. got to find it in a way where you're not catching them across the forearm. Be consistent. That's all anybody can ask is Phillips. And now we got Jenkins and Barino locked up. They're going to say Jenkins was shoving Barino out, and now the Northwest fans are not happy. Well, they're not happy, and that's going to be, I believe, the third foul on that Jenkins. Is, that's, that's big. He that's hasn't, he hasn't real scored big. yet, but he's been doing a great job with the ball movement and great job on defense on Barino. I'm not sure if Scarberry knows that uh, that was three on him. Oh, wow. Nice job by Wolfenbarker to get it in. And now Jenkins going to bring the ball up across the timeline with three fouls here with three minutes to go in the first half. You cannot pick up number four if you're Jenkins. Wolfenbarker, left wing, three-point shot. Back of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Withero. He hands off to Phillips. Dylan Phillips will cross the three-point, or I'm sorry, cross the timeline near side. And now they're going to say Barino was locked up with Jenkins. I think this is something down here, Chris, that we're going to have to watch because both these guys are just shoving and pushing, and that time they were saying it was Barino getting a little too strong on the back of Jenkins. So Jay Allen picks up his second foul. If I'm both these coaches, I'm thinking about maybe switching off in terms of who's defending who solely for the fact of you don't want two of your best players who are going to end up getting in foul trouble as Dylan Phillips jumps the pass. Here comes Rodney Smith, baseline. Back to Phillips for three. Got it. Dylan Phillips drills the three from the left wing. 29-24 Malvern. 2.30 to play. First half. Here comes Lentz right down. Broad oh. is swatted away by Barino. That's three fouls. And that's three. And you're going to have to sit him down if you're head coach Dennis Tucci. Oh, they didn't. They did not call. I think they called they it minor? on Mitchell Minor. That yep. is Miner's first. Wow, yep. that's huge if you're Malvern, too, not getting that third foul on Barino. Huh. You and I saw the same thing, yeah. though. Yeah, I thought Barino came across the arm and picked up the foul late, but they must have got Miner with the body. And what's Shan it? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, got, uh, Shannon, did you see? How did you see it? Yeah, well, he split the pair, and when he went up, uh, Miner turned his body, got him with the body on, the left, on his right side, and then Barino came in and cleaned him. And luckily for Barino... He went with the first contact and not the, the assault. Gotcha. As Lentz makes both at the first Federal Community Bank foul line. The other interesting thing there, Barino was on the other side. The official was blocked by Miner. Could not see Barino come right down across the forearm. Good point. As Withero has it left wing, 2.16 to play, 29-26. Hornets in front. And there's a travel from Smith. He was trying to get it to Barino, and Jenkins was on him again. Smith actually tried to do the pass and kind of just caught it himself, and he, it's a travel. But that probably saved a layup at this end as Jenkins uh, was going to go coast to coast for the easy lay-in. Smith just got the turnover, and uh, that was Malvern's fourth. Northwest with five as Wolfenbarker brings it into the front court and gives it off to Jenkins. Jenkins with it on the Ohio logo. Back to Wolfenbarker left wing. Zone defense now, out of oh, Malvern, wow. and they get the steal. Beautiful poke away right there by Phillips to Rodney Smith, the lay-in at the other end. 31-26, Malvern in front. Jay Jenkins will bring the ball across the timeline. The six-foot senior. Jenkins has it on the, about Mansfield on the court, somewhere in there. Yes, we're using that as a reference. Three-point shot up and no good. Rebound oh, and Witherow, wow. listen, if you're Jared Witherow, and that's exactly what Tucci's saying, 
Coach Tucci said, just grab the basketball. So Withrow was on the baseline and was just going to let it go. He was boxing yep. out Lintz. Lintz went right around him, turned around, and threw it off of his chest. So it stays with Northwest. Again, another high IQ play for Lintz. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, Withrow, just a junior, but he's been playing long enough. you got to know that. you got to know, just go get the basketball. Be, a, be aggressive about it and don't be passive about it. Little man-to-man -man defense now switching back into the man is Malvern. Northwest with the basketball moving from right to left in the white uniforms. Three-point shot on the way. Bang! Wow! Tanner Bullen from deep downtown. That cuts the lead to two. Malvern 31-29, one minute to play in the first half from the Convocation Center. Jay Allen Barino into the lane, shot up, good! And they oh. call a player control foul. Oh, my goodness. You got to be kidding me. The kid was underneath the basket, literally underneath the basket, and they called the offensive foul on that. And I think Coach Tucci and the Malvern wow. bench are hot because Bolin flexed. Well, after he did it, he stood up and looked at his bench and flexed, and they weren't happy about that. That's three fouls on Marino, though. Yeah, he was in head coach Dennis Tucci all over the official on the far side as they are going to inbound the basketball, 31-29. That's going to be three on Jay Allen Marino. After the offensive foul, he sits down. Wolfenbarker into the lane, shot up, blocked, but he's going to head to the line. And the Northwest fans are excited, and the Malvern fans are not happy right now. I'm not sure if they're going to get... I just don't understand how you call an offensive foul when the player, the defensive player is literally standing directly underneath the basket. Right. There's, there's supposed to be a little leeway, so to speak, right. on how far under the basket right. they're allowed to stand. And, I, I mean, from our angle, and we were on the far end, as the first free throw clangs off back iron. From our end, I mean, he was, if he would have raised him straight up, his head's in the basket. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll press on. Wolfenbarker missed the first one from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. The second one is up, rattles around, no good. Rebounded by Mitchell Miner. 46 seconds, Malvern still with a two-point lead despite a little bit of controversy. Drake Hutchison standing on the logo. Go ahead, Nick. Of course, we got to thank Pieces with Purpose, Rockies Auto, and Clark Kidder Real Estate. Jumping on for this Malvern basketball broadcast. We thank them so much. They're part of the reason we get to present you some high school basketball in Z country. Drake Hutchison, 20 seconds left, just out front, kind of waiting. Trying to get Ethan Crabtree to come up and play some defense. 13 seconds, Hutchison waiting. Two-point lead for Malvern, now they'll go. Phillips on the left side, or on the right side. To Rodney Smith on the high oh. post, he lost it. Here comes Lintz. Lintz with three seconds, shot up, in. Wow. What a momentum changer, and guess what? We are going to be knotted at 31 at the break, and head coach Dennis Tucci not happy. 31-31, and head coach Dennis Tucci not happy. Shannon, go ahead. Coach, I see you're not happy with the way that this second quarter ended for you. No, I don't like to call it Jay Allen's third foul. I know there's no restriction in high school, but to me, they got there late and they rewarded him with the foul. Coach, what's going to be the message to the boys here to start the second half? We're tied. we got to play. we got 16 minutes. Hopefully, we're wearing them down. I mean, that's the, that's the hope that we're wearing them down. So. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. All right. That was Shannon Thomas down with head coach Dennis Tucci. That trip to the sidelines brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. We have reached the Dak Benjamin's Minerals Halftime Show. When we return, myself, Nick McWilliams, Shannon Thomas will give you all the totals and uh, figure out what's going to happen here in the second half. We are nodding at 31. Back after this on 99.9 WTUZ and Claxon Communications. Novellus Urexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Urexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Urexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983.
Ford Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. Ron Rug Automotive has been Malvern's one-stop automotive repair shop since 1999. Ron Rug Automotive is a Napa certified repair shop with ASC certified technicians. Ron Rug Automotive is able to handle any job from oil changes and tire replacements to installing Jasper engines and transmissions. They also offer boat, RV, and trailer repair. Learn more about Ron Rug Automotive by visiting the website ronrugautomotive.com or Find them on Facebook. Roofing and Exterior Product Services of Ohio, or REPS, has serviced the roofing and construction industry since 1988. REPS and its team of professionals represent several of the major commercial roofing, continuous building insulation, exterior product, rain screen assembly, concrete, and waterproofing manufacturers in the Midwest. Their roofing, exterior, and waterproofing divisions work seamlessly together to help you create a complete building envelope. REPS is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornets Athletics and wishes them the best of luck in tonight's game. This is Jordan Hartzler. At Hartzler's Quality Housing, our goal is to help customers achieve the dream of home ownership. We have been a family-owned, affordable housing business for over 40 years. We value our customers and have the knowledge and experience to help you walk through the home buying process from start to finish. Conveniently located just off I-77 in New Philadelphia, stop by and browse their model homes or learn more by visiting Hartzler's.com. Pieces with Purpose is a custom apparel and decal shop located in Carrollton. They are devoted to promoting independence, purpose, and confidence for their family and community members facing developmental disabilities and the struggles those bring. They do this through custom apparel pieces, sports gear, and window vehicle decals. Pieces with Purpose offers vinyl, embroidery, screen printing, and digitally printed designs. See all Pieces with Purpose offers by visiting PiecesWithPurposeCustomTees.com. Pieces with Purpose is a proud supporter of the Malvern Hornets. Your local one-stop shop, Rockies, offering a full-service auto and truck repair shop at the Waynesburg location. You can schedule your appointment today by calling 330-866-5501. If you need a tow, they have that too. Stop into any of the three convenience store locations, Waynesburg, Malvern, or Minerva, to fill up the tank and enjoy a hot cup of coffee. Rockies has been family-owned for almost 50 years, and they would like to thank you for your continued support. And from everyone on Rockies' team, go Hornets! All right, here we go. It's halftime. Brought to you by DAC Vitamins and Minerals. DAC would like to recognize each and every athlete, coach, manager, teacher, band member, cheerleader, and parent for everything they contribute to their team and wish everyone good luck this season. From DAC Vitamins and Minerals, feeding champions since 1983. Welcome back to the convo on the campus of the Ohio University down here in Athens. And uh, both teams have not been to the regional semifinal in quite a quite a long time. At and, least not here. And, and not here uh, for Malvern since I think 2000, mm-hmm. Adam said. And uh, both teams shooting pretty well. You know, both teams right around the 50, 60% mark. Uh, not shooting it great from the three point line, but Nonetheless, uh, you know, we are knotted at 31 here on the Dak Vitamins and Minerals Halftime Show. And, uh, Nick, it's it's been entertaining, to say the least. It certainly has been entertaining. But if you're Malvern on defense, you're probably beside yourself solely for the fact it's Connor Lentz and Tanner Bolin who have taken over this game for Northwest. They account for 27 
of the 31 points that Northwest has to this point. So you're uh, a number one problem that you have to take care of is number one and number 12 out there on the court. And for Malvern, you got to be concerned about the fact that you got Barino now with three fouls. I mean, I don't know how that's going to affect him moving forward. We know he is an attacking player. He's still going to be attacking the hoop. But how much is Northwest going to keep that in the back of their mind, trying to draw those charges again as uh, Shannon Thomas down there still waiting for uh, head coach Rick Scarberry for Northwest as the uh, – Coaches for the Mohawks are coming out. We'll see if Shannon can catch up with Coach Scarberry. Uh, I have to imagine not too disappointed with this team being tied up here at half. There Now Shannon's got him. Coach, pretty exciting first half right there. Both teams 21 points in the first quarter, up to 31 and a half. I mean, what was the voice of the message here at halftime? It just got to stay the course, man. We, we got a game plan. We got to keep, got to do a better job on the boards. We got to step up, make some shots. We're missing some shots we usually don't miss. But big floor, good team. Like we said before, everybody's good now. We got to play. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right, that was head coach Rick Scarberry brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. And go ahead, Nick. Just the last thing I had for you here, he said about crashing the boards. Would you believe Northwest has four rebounds in this entire game so far through two quarters? Four. Yeah, yeah. Four, and they're tied up at 31 apiece. Yeah, Malvern with five first-half turnovers. Northwest with six. Malvern 43%. From the foul line at 3 of 7, Northwest 4 of 7, 57%. Any uh, individual stuff you want to bring uh, up? Outside of the fact so far in this game, you know, you got three steals by way of Dylan Phillips for Malvern. Those have been huge steals, and he is going to have to continue to turn up that defensive pressure in the second half. All right, thank you very much, Nick McWilliams. That's going to wrap up our Dak Vitamins and Minerals Halftime Show. When we come back, second half of the Division Three Region 11 champion or semifinal right after this on Big Z Sports. The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team is founded on trust, integrity, discretion, and a total commitment to maximizing the value of your home with 100% satisfaction. Working together, Robin and Melanie have found their diverse neighborhood knowledge and savvy business skills to be perfect complements in finding their clients the perfect fit in their home buying experience. To learn more, visit ClarkKitterTeam.ColorHomes.com. The Clark Kidder Real Estate Team would like to wish the best of luck to the Malvern Hornets in tonight's game. The Contini Insurance Agency knows that shopping insurance isn't always fine, but they strive to make the experience a little less painful. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or recreational vehicles, as an independent insurance agency, they will make recommendations for the coverage you need at a price you can afford, with multiple companies and options available to best suit each situation. To learn more about the Contini Insurance Agency, visit ContiniInsurance.com. The Contini Insurance Agency is a proud supporter of Malvern Hornet Athletics. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA has provided residents in Malvern and Minerva the freshest quality products since 1954. The family-owned grocery store prides themselves on providing the communities with quality products, including their daily cut fresh meats, by their on-site butcher. Hishman's Fresh Market IGA is a proud supporter of community events in their local school districts and would like to wish the Malvern Hornets best of luck in tonight's game. See all Kishman's Fresh Market IGA offers by visiting kishmans.com. Third quarter getting ready to get underway. Our Dak Vitamins and Minerals halftime show is no more. And we are working towards our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show now. Malvern will start with the basketball. Barino and Jenkins will start the second half with three fouls. Malvern in the green uniforms. White numerals moving from right to left now. Nice backdoor pass to Dylan Phillips. He couldn't get it, <laughs> but it found right into the hands of Jared Witherow, and he laid it in. Malvern up 33-31. Hey, Mom, look what I found. Yeah, the Mohawks will start their first trip to the offensive end, moving from left to right in the white uniforms, blue numerals trimmed in red. And Lentz tried to drive to the basket. It didn't go. Malvern's basketball. Here comes Barino. Barino into the front court. Phillips, deep three. Got it! Wow. Dylan Phillips buried the three. Talking a little trash. Back stepping down the floor and a quick five to open things up for Malvern. He loves to see Phillips get fired up, but he was also telling him get back on defense. Yeah, get back on defense. But look, if you're if you have a fired up Dylan Phillips, that's a good thing for Malvern. Back with the basketball is Northwest. Wolf and Barker has it. He'll give it off to Bolin. Bolin left wing hands off to Jenkins. Jenkins, they'll swing it around. Lintz has it in the corner. He'll get out of trouble. Now gets it back. He'll try the three. Got it. <laughs> Connor right. Lentz, the 6'2 senior, says what one senior can do, the other can do also. 
First assists to the game, too, for Tanner Bolin. Rodney. Extra pass, always a good idea. Yep, Rodney Smith had it. Phillips with it in the corner. He's going to try and drive into the lane. Thought better of it. Gives it off to Barino. Barino, foul line. Takes a couple dribbles. Rodney Smith in the corner. No good. And a nice offensive board by Jared Witherow. He tipped it to himself up over top of Bolin. Doing a good job of not being over the back on that. Well, it's all body positioning. You know, he got down low. He backed his man in as far as he could as Miner nearly has it stolen. Miner nearly had it stolen. He drops it off to Barino. Barino into the lane. Shot up no good. I thought I heard a whistle. I guess There's not. A shoe. Three throw points. offensive rebound to Phillips. Three no good. Rodney Smith couldn't get through Connor Lintz there, and Lintz got the rebound, and now the Mohawks will bring the ball across the timeline. Lintz quickly down the left side of the lane, <laughs> and I don't know what he did there, but he threw it up behind his back over his head and scored, and we're tied at 36. Connor Lintz was, I thought he was out of control, but he knew exactly what he was doing. Between Barino and Phillips over top of Miner. Mitchell Miner. Has it on the left wing, tried to get it into Rodney Smith. Bad pass, another turnover for Malvern. They're second here in the second half. In the lane, Wolfenbarker. Lentz back to Jenkins. Three-point shot, front of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Miner. He hands off to Rodney Smith. Smith will bring it up the far side and throw it over to Dylan Phillips. Phillips with it. I was going to say, I wonder when Malvern's going to do this. They've slowed down because they've had some of those bad offensive possessions on their shots. And we talked about that, one of those Needham Dawn Company keys to the game. Look, if you get on a little cold streak or something doesn't go your way, just slow it down, get a good shot like that. Dylan Phillips with the dime from J. Allen Barino. And Phillips with the bucket there for the Hornets. Dylan Phillips, his first two of the basketball game. That, that ain't right either. No, no. Because he just hit the three. That. Yes. Yeah, so the scoreboard definitely not right above us. Wolfenbarker has it high post, finds Lentz all alone underneath, and Rodney Smith got him a little bit with the body. It's either that or Phillips was behind him. I don't know if they're going to say he shoved him from behind on the shot, but it does look like they're saying it's Smith. And we can see if Shannon wants to go over and tell the scorer's table that uh, the uh, big board is way wrong. You're, you're, you got it flipped again there, Kale. No. Dylan Phillips is number th – oh, never mind. He's got – never mind. I'm, you know what I was looking at? Personal yes, fouls. Yes, I do. I don't know <laughs> what I'm looking at. Dude, I'm all out of wax. Lentz never mind. The first one. <laughs> Connor Lentz makes the first one from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. I think I'm just going to shut up the rest of the night and watch the game. Well, we're not used to having this big board in yeah, front of and us. It's, and it, one's on top of the other, and the, and the other one's over on the other side. It's just not uh, – not conventional that I'm looking at it, but nonetheless, Lentz's second shot is up front of the rim, no good. Miner tips it to Witherow for the rebound, and Northwest is one for two here in the second half. The only two trips to the first Federal Community Bank foul line through the first four minutes. 4.05 to play. Mitchell Miner has it, top of the circle. He'll find Jay Allen Barino on the low block. Marino spins in the lane, a lot of contact. He gets it off to Witherow. Finally, we got something. Yeah, I, I cannot believe. Listen, Jay Allen Marino was being mugged it was in Jay, the paint. It was Jay Jenkins on him again. By the way, that's Jenkins' fourth foul. I'd have to imagine it's going on Jenkins because the ball went to the hands of Witherow, and he got locked up by Jenkins again as well. I mean, he... It's one thing for, you know, going for a jump ball, going for tight defense. I never saw the hand on the ball. They did not give it to Jenkins. And now yeah. we're going to get an offensive foul. It's either on Barino or Phillips, and I don't know which one, but if this is on Barino. It yeah. is on Jay Allen Barino. Fourth foul on Jay Allen Barino. And I just realized they did not call the foul on Jenkins. What they said is his hands were on the ball and that he stepped on the baseline, so it's out of bounds on North e or Northwest. That's why it stayed with Malvern. Have no idea. So but Jenkins that is was a, not called. Yeah, he was not called and tipped away by Rodney Smith out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Wolfenbarker there came across the timeline, had it poked away, and it went off of his hand, was going towards the scores table. He dove and tried to save it, but they said it was out on Malvern. Shannon, you were right in front of that. Did you see it? No, I was standing here behind the scores table, so I couldn't see where it went out of bounds at. Gotcha. All right, L with it is Lentz. He'll swing it around the perimeter. Wolfenbarker caught a oh. bird and blocked from behind by Witherow. With the basketball is Bolin on the offensive rebound. He throws it up out of control, and Miner has it. He goes 
to Drake Hutchison. Now uh, we're a little out of control in terms of the physicality. Yeah, Hutchison into the lane, and they call a travel. A fourth Malvern turnover. Northwest does not have one. And head coach Denny Tucci not happy on the far side. Neither are Malvern student section that are saying some not so nice things. We'll just put it that way. In the lane and the kick out three point shot. Front of the rim no good by Caleb Lewis and rebounded by Rodney Smith. 38-37 all this adversity Malvern's facing. They still have a one point lead in this one. And timeout head coach Dennis Tucci. Probably a good one. For the Malvern Hornets back in 30 seconds right after this on Big Z Sports. Do you have property you'd like to have cleared? Do you know the value of standing timber? Well, Millwood Lumber in Janaden Hutton is a buyer of standing timber and land across Ohio. Millwood Lumber also offers two convenient ways of purchasing firewood. Prepackaged bark-free firewood producing less creosote, ash, debris, and bugs providing convenience for you. Or you can purchase bulk firewood by the truckload. Learn more about Millwood Lumber. Visit Millwood Lumber. Inc.com. Back to the Convocation Center. That timeout brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. And we'll take a trip to the sidelines. Brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Shannon, what had Coach Denny Tucci have to say, or what did he have to yell down there? <laughs> All right, he, he was calm. He was just drawing up some offensive plays, trying yeah. to show him a better way to get to the passing lanes. Since Jay Allen's not in the game, he, he drawed up something a little different and said, listen, this will work. All right. With it is Hutchison, he goes to Phillips. Dylan Phillips, foul line extended. He'll back it out to the right wing. Now back it out to center court. He'll go back to Hutchison, who goes over to Rodney Smith between the circles. Smith, with the left hand, goes to Jared Witherow. Back on the baseline to Hutchison. He'll get out of trouble. Phillips with it. Back to Hutchison. Hutchison almost lost it. Got the screen from Witherow. Hutchison into the lane, shot up no good, and he's going to get the foul, and are we finally going to get another foul? I think this one this should be on the fourth. Jenkins. Also, again, you know, I understand playing through contact, so to speak, but these whistles are coming after the players are laying on the court, and I I mean, I'm all for a physical brand of basketball, but at a certain point i got to start questioning when these whistles are coming in. Hutchison got thrown from on the right block all the way to the S on the far side of Bobcats along the baseline before he finally got that whistle. But Hutchison, uh, so far 0 for 2 from the charity stripe. First shot is front of the rim just like the last one. And checking out, checking back in is Crabtree and checking out is Jenkins with the four fouls. So both number 10s for both these teams got four fouls. Hutchison, second shot, good. Use all so that rim. Rattled that one home. Both teams one for two from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. Hutchison with the full court pressure on Lentz. They'll swing it up the floor. What a nice fine. backdoor. Oh! Blocked by Rodney Smith. Here comes Dylan Phillips the other way to Hutchison. Hutchison in the lane. A lot of contact. No foul. They finally called it late. My God, he was <laughs> plowed down there. And they weren't going to blow the whistle. I would like to point out, Chris Kale, that I'm normally the one who has the Woo! least reaction from up here on press row. But at a certain point, <laughs> yeah, at a certain I got my hands up in the air. Yeah, at a certain point, you just start shaking your head and go, man. Hey, hey, guys, did you notice that the guy standing on the baseline wasn't the one that called it? It was yeah. the guy running at half court yeah. that came in and called the foul. Yeah, it's, it's getting a little absurd if you ask me. But at least these guys aren't going to go back and watch the broadcast like the last officiating <laughs> crew did for us, huh, Shannon? <laughs> Hutchison missed the first, made the second. He's only two for six from the free throw line, but still pushes the lead to three. 40 to 37, 208 to play in the third quarter. With the basketball is Lewis, left wing, kicks in the corner. Lentz shot up, no good, rebounded by Rodney Smith. He has Hutchison on his right. He gives it off to him. Wow! Hutchison has it blocked from behind by Caleb Lewis. And I, I don't know if that was clean or not, but he blocked it. Nonetheless, it was emphatic. It was definitely clean up on the top. I wasn't really looking for the body on the jump, but that was a great job by Lewis. Just stay with your yeah. man and anticipate the jump. That's what he did perfectly. Hutchison has it, of course. Only 5'11 is the junior, and Caleb Lewis, a six-foot senior. Rodney Smith with it out on the Ohio University logo. Now to Hutchinson, 139 to play. Dylan Phillips with it right wing. Finds Mitchell Miner. 
Miner's been quiet in the third quarter. Turnaround jumper, no good. What nice offensive rebound by Withero again. Listen, you got to get Mitchell Miner going. You know, you got Marino out of the basketball game. Your other big scorer between Phillips and Miner, they got to start doing something here if you're Malvern. Rodney Smith with it, back to Phillips. Phillips will retreat, give off to Hutchison. This is where you go, Chris. You got to slow things down. You got to keep this pace. Just keep this lead. You know, you don't play not to lose, but you can't have your foot, foot pressed as far down on the pedal as you'd like. Yeah, both teams not much scoring Ooh. here in the third quarter. Rodney Smith into the lane. Shot up oh. good. Nice floater. Nice body control in the air as Rodney Smith. That's the possession pressure. they need. And into the front court, trailing 42-27 is Northwest. The ball's going to be hit out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Number 12 actually knocked that ball out of bounds with his right hand. How could the guy standing there's a, there's, right well, in there's front a of it not see it? There we go. At least they got it right. So, my goodness, so dude. For the, so for those listening, Dylan, it was actually Rodney Smith who poked it away. It went out of the hands of Bolin. Wow. Bolin was trying to throw it away from uh, Phillips, who was nowhere close to the ball with his hand, and then the official said it was still a Northwest ball. Yeah. Thankfully, the trailing referee who saw it a lot better got the call correctly, and or not, this place might have come unglued. And blow the whistle is going to be uh, all over that one when they go back and watch that video. They'll be tweeting about me again, Shannon. <laughs> Guys, if I'm Malvern, I keep the pressure on. Standing yeah. down here on the court, Northwest has really taken a lot of deep breaths. They're not using a lot of substitutes. I mean, I, the, the legs might be coming an issue now. That might be why their shots are coming up short. In fact, Shannon, their only substitute they've really used in Crabtree is still out there, but now they actually do have uh, Ivan Ely on the court. First time, and you're coming in after uh, two and a half, almost three full quarters. You know, or how fresh are you? Are, are your yeah. legs locked up? 17 seconds left. Hutchinson has it out by the Ohio Bobcat logo. 10 seconds. Now they'll go. Phillips has it. Back to Hutchinson. Hutchison going to drive the right side of the lane. Scoop shot, no good. Witherow battling for the rebound. Let it go out of bounds, and it's going to go over. And Witherow just going to scream and walk down the floor. As it went out of bounds, it'll head back over to the Mohawks with 2.4 to play. Malvern's got an uphill battle. When uh, It's tough when you're, when oh. you're five on eight and almost the three point, deep three-point three-quarter shot was no good, despite... Eight on five, Malvern leads 42-37. Fours in the air, back on Big Z Sports right after this. Sammy Sue's Barbecue on Front Street in Dover offers a menu full of house-smoked meats, including choices like ribs, chicken, steak, and pork. Sammy Sue's takes pride in knowing that everything on the menu is made fresh in their kitchen with the freshest ingredients. Sammy's also offers a variety of specials all week long, including the popular wing nights every Tuesday and Thursday. Find Sammy Sue's Barbecue on Facebook for a full list of daily specials and everything they have to offer. This is Brian Williams, commercial lender with the First National Bank of Denison. The day you decided to open your business, you planted the seed. As your roots become stronger, the First National Bank of Denison is here to help your business grow. Strong businesses make strong communities, and because we live, work, and raise our families here, your business benefits us all. Whether you need more space, equipment, or inventory, come see us today for your next business loan. We are a local bank with local decision makers, and your success is our greatest reward. At the First National Bank of Denison, we have our roots where others have their branches. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Welcome back to the convo. Chris Kale, Nick McWilliams, and Shannon Thomas. Fours in the air, fourth quarter underway at the convo for the D7 Region 11 semifinal. The right to go to the Elite Eight. Malvern leads 42 37. That timeout between quarters brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. We'll take a trip to the sidelines right after this shot from Wolfenbarker. It rattles around. It was no good. Wow. Rebounded by Lentz, and they got the little touch foul on the stick back from Witherow, and Lint's gonna drop that one in to cut the lead to 42-39. Lint's gonna head to the free throw line for the N1 opportunity. Shannon, uh, what did head coach Dennis Tucci have to say? Hey guys, both coaches made it easy on me this time. Both of them said defense. We both gotta play defense, we gotta get in their face. It's all about defense in this fourth quarter. All right, thank you very much. That trip to the sidelines brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Malvern with the basketball, the two point lead. 7.30, gone by as Connor Lentz knocks in the and one from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. Witherow with it at the foul line. Mitchell Miner underneath. Miner shot up no good. Witherow wow. tried to get the rebound. Rodney Smith had it. He's mugged underneath. No foul. Lentz will come away with it. 
Connor Lentz down the lane, the crossover move off the rim, no good. He missed the bunny. Dylan Phillips up with it to Mitchell Miner. Miner shrugs off, caught a bird, drilled. Oh, I thought he was going to drill the three right there. <laughs> off the front of the rim, no good. Quickly as Tanner Bolin into the lane, the spin move, and I think he traveled. No, I think they're going to say they got a forearm shiver, and sure oh, enough, they did. They, call did. It. they said he, they he, did. They, he pushed the arm out and put it into him. All right. Yeah, yeah, guys, if he don't put his elbow up right there, they get the foul on Witherow because Witherow was all over him, but as soon as Witherow touched him, he threw the elbow at him. 42 to 40, only the second Northwest turnover. Hutchison back in the ball game. And uh, Shannon, how long do you let Marino sit there if your head coach Dennis Tucci with seven minutes to go with four fouls? I think Coach Tucci's going to let him sit here until he loses the lead. And when he loses the lead, he'll put him back in. Okay. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Shannon, good job. Hutchison with it. He'll go to Witherow right wing. Witherow back to Hutchison. Two-point game for Malvern. Into the corner, Dylan Phillips. Three-point shot. Got it. <laughs> Dylan Phillips buried it. Talking trash, walking down the floor. Some and of the biggest shots of this game for Malvern that have been made have come from number three's hands. Yeah, Dylan Phillips. With 10 now, I think that's 13. He's got 13 now. Lentz with it, almost threw it off of Caleb Lewis's chest. Bowling into the lane, he bowled his way in there. And Dylan Phillips going to get the rebound off the tip back. Dylan Phillips into the front court, hands off to Rodney Smith. Smith in front of head coach Dennis Tucci. Coach Tucci says, hey, throw it out here, let's settle it down. 6-10 to play in the basketball game. Malvern 45, Northwest 40. And a good one, the right to go to the Elite Eight right back here on Saturday at 1 o'clock. And Mitchell Miner steps on the bait or on the sideline. So it was fifth Malvern turnover. It was Caleb Lewis who was locked up with him there. Miner actually lost the ball, saved it from the sideline, but then he lost track of himself when he was trying to spin and create space. He just had that back foot that ended up hitting the sideline. Again, this game. Listening live on 99.9 WTUZ FM, streaming anywhere in the world at WTUZ.com. You can also check this game out on our YouTube live stream after this game goes final. As soon as it goes final, Clax Communications post it to YouTube. You can go back and watch <laughs> it when you get home, or if you're already home and maybe you're at work, you can watch it when you get home. Live stream replay. Live stream replay. Three-point shot on the way. Oh, no. Banks are open <laughs> for Jenkins. Jenkins hits the bank three. He's back in the game. That's his first three of the game. First points. And he's got her first, yeah, first points. He's got four fouls. And I believe we've got something, something, something happened fell. on the baseline. Yeah. Something and happened down there on the baseline. 45 43. 520 to play. We're going to have to sweep up. we got some stuff laying there on the baseline. But do want to take a moment here to also thank some of the other additional sponsors who have jumped on for these Malvern Tournament games, Contini Insurance, Millwood Lumber, and the always great Sammy Sues. Thank you to every single sponsor that has jumped on, as well as uh, Cushman's IGA. If you want to find our Facebook page after this game, Natalie Holbrook has got some great photos she's posted that is brought to you by Cushman's IGA. Absolutely. And Shannon, what was that that fell? Something from the college game, isn't it, from the uh – Attenuator there. It was a, a stool or something. Barino's back in. Jay Allen Barino with the drive and the score. Jay Allen has not played in the third quarter, and he didn't play half of this one as he kicks the ball out of bounds, imploring his team on. Also, sorry, Shannon, I yeah. cut you off, but go ahead. Uh, it is a stool that one of the photographers okay. used to sit on. I don't know if it exploded while they were sitting on it or if it just it got kicked because everything was going on down there. Gotcha. <laughs> if it exploded while he was sitting on it. Three-point shot on the way. Rebounded by Rodney Smith. Smith's fifth rebound in this contest. He'll bring it up and hand it off to Barino. Under five minutes to go. This is where I said, Chris, that Barino was going to come back in. He drives, and we're going to get a blocking foul that time. As I, I don't know that he wanted to call the blocking no, foul well, there, but he so, did. So what happened was Bolin was sliding in front of him, yeah. which was enough for the block, but Barino actually slowed up enough to the point there wasn't a whole bunch of contact, so he didn't even know if he really wanted to call the block either. Right. So Malvern will inbound Dylan Phillips underneath their own basket. 4.47 to play. Malvern by five. J. Allen Barino skies up, gets it. Oh, wow. They're going to call Lentz on that. Or, excuse me, not Lentz. They're going to call Lewis. Yeah, they get Caleb Lewis on the blocking foul. I believe that's his first foul, though. 
Right, Link one on him. Uh, for Lentz, that would be his first. What happened, Barino skied the ball in between Lentz and Lewis. Lewis was behind it, didn't even know the ball was coming. Barino yeah. was coming down. He just kind of put his arm up behind him and got it in between the arms of Barino. I think it was a little ticky-tacky, if you ask me, as Lentz had a little bit of contact on Jay Allen there. I thought that was more of a foul than the other one. But Dylan Phillips with it, now with row, top of the key. Back to Jay Allen, Barino, left wing. 4.27 to play, 47-43, Hornets in front of the Mohawks. Tight defense there by Connor Lentz on yeah, Jay Allen Barino. Finally got it there. Finally, Connor, and Connor Lentz is complaining about it. Are you kidding me? So Lentz is upset. <laughs> Lentz is upset because Barino gets that arm out in front of him, not necessarily yeah, shoving no but keeping space. The issue here was Lentz, when he reached down, pulled yeah. the arm of Barino yeah, back. No way. No way you can call uh, the, the off arm on that. Is Jay Allen with the basketball. Lentz going to try and come up from behind. He pokes it wow, away. Wow, great play. And a great play by Connor Lentz. Lentz coming the other way. Dylan Phillips had it blocked. Oh. oh, my goodness. Nice job by Phillips and Rodney Smith on that. Phillips into the court, front court. Floater wouldn't go. Rebounded by Wolfenbarker. Wolfenbarker, the sophomore, brings it up. And with it is Bolin. Bolin, baseline jumper. Got oh. it. Tanner Bolin, the 6'3 senior, knocks that one in. And timeout by Rick Scarberry, 47, 45, back in one minute after this on Big C Sports. <laughs> Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with Auto Works Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, Auto Works has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let Auto Works of Strasburg work for you. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. Back from the Convocation Center, Chris Kale, Nick McWilliams, Shannon Thomas. Shannon, what have Coach Dennis Tucci have to say in that timeout? Uh, Coach Tucci, he, he's preaching offense. Take care of the ball, pass it around. You got to get your shot off down here in Northwest Huddle. He's saying the same thing, defense, defense, defense. If you let them get spread out too much, then we're picking up the foul. You got to keep them in front of them, keep them in check. Thank you very much, Shannon. That timeout brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. Trip to the sidelines to all night long, Shannon Thomas. Brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. Here comes Jay Allen Barino, baseline, oh, and he was oh, absolutely oh. plowed from behind. Looks like Lentz and Jay Allen both going to get up. Jay Allen definitely took that one, the brunt of the lower back, and Lentz went down hard on the floor to his face and chest area. Lentz is listed at 6'2", and he's not necessarily a super skinny guy, so that's a lot no. of weight coming down on Barino. Yeah, Barino. Quickly pop back up, Lentz as well. No harm, no foul on that. Lentz was just selling out for the block. He yeah, wasn't expecting no, a Barino bump, yeah. pump fake. A absolutely no malicious intent whatsoever there. Jay Allen Barino at the free throw line. First shot is up and good from the First Federal Community Bank free throw line. Three for five as Malvern in the second half. Second shot, Jay Allen has it, takes two dribbles with it, fires it up, and it's good. So making both at the free throw line is Jay Allen Barino. And checking out was Hutchison. Back in was Dylan Phillips. 13 points from the senior leader, number three right now. I know and we've talked a ton about Lentz, but my goodness, this kid is having a monster game, and that is oh, one that, heck of a ball player. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Jay Jenkins with the basketball. He goes right wing to Lewis. Lewis will dribble with the left hand towards the top of the key. Hands off to Lentz. A little bit of traffic out there. Witherow runs into him. Back into his zone defense is Malvern. Now they'll switch back into a man. And Lentz into the lane. Shot up no good. Rebounded by Rodney Smith. Great rebound by Rodney Smith who comes in at 6-2 and skies up over 
the offensive player to pick up the defensive rebound. Withrow touching at his uh, lips and his gums there. I think he got clocked in the mouth, just making sure they're, that they're all still there. Now he's getting ready for the shot here at the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan Phillips with it. Phillips gives it off to Jay Allen Barino. 49-45, 2.49 to play. If you're Malvern, man, you just... This yeah, is Jay Allen's going to go into the lane. He thought better of it. Good move as he gets it back out to Phillips. See, we you don't want to pick up an offensive foul, right? We saw Malvern do this against Ferry and just kill a lot of clock, then set up a really nice shot. And all of a sudden what you're doing is if you're up by four, you get a good shot. Now all of a sudden you're up by six. You're putting all the pressure on Northwest. Hop step in the lane. Barino off the glass and good. Jay Allen Barino into double figures finally. And Lentz will bring it up across the timeline. Into the lane, spin move, and they're going to call Rodney Smith. And yes, he did. Yes, he did wrap him up on that. Got Rodney that. Smith almost kind of bear hugged him quickly, but he did. Foul should be on Rodney Smith there for the Malvern Hornets. I think he had that back arm up yep. high. That was that was the good one for to go after the shot. The other arm that was lower, though, was around the waist. Right. His second foul, and at the first Federal Community Bank foul line is Connor Lentz, and he drills the first one. Three for four in the second half from the first Federal Community Bank foul line is Northwest. 51-46, 2.14 to play. Both teams with, actually, Malvern with four timeouts, Northwest with three. And the second shot is up and good. And speaking of timeouts, we've got one on the floor. 51-47, the right to go to the Elite Eight. Back in 30 seconds after this on Big Z Sports. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Welcome back to the Convocation Center. Chris Kale, Nick McWilliams, Shannon Thomas, Adam Sewesky doing social media, Natalie Holbrook doing pictures, all brought to you by Kishman IGA. And Malvern with the basketball and the four-point lead, 2.14 to play. Is there anything else you could have asked for from a regional semi? This has just been no. electric from the start. Oh, I don't want overtime. I don't think my heart can handle it, dude. <laughs> Jay Allen Marino dribbling with the right hand into the front court. Stops at the Ohio Bobcat logo, now goes towards the baseline. Shut off, good defense by Connor Lentz. They move Lentz to him now. Notice the switch on defense. Jay Allen Marino can hit that. He turned it down. Well, goes no, to this Phillips, is the smart play. Smart play oh, again yeah. on offense. Well, look, you get Jay Jenkins, who has four fouls away from Lentz, or I mean away from Jay Allen Marino. Connor Lentz with it, being guarded, now guarding Rodney Smith. Smith to the baseline. Wow! Alone. What a quick move, Rodney Smith. That is what Malvern had been doing on how many times down as Jenkins down the lane, too strong. Smith rebound, foul from behind by and, Lewis. And Witherow skied for that one. As what I was trying to say was... Uh, we saw that same exact set run five straight times yeah. from Malvern. It's just those double screens off to the side of the left side of the paint. Yeah, yeah, guys, if you watch, Jay Allen Brino would always dribble in there and dribble back out, and then he would dribble in there, and then he'd hand it off. Well, then when the next guy would come in and he'd give it back to him, they all went to Brino thinking that he was going to hand the ball back off. Yep. Smith with the easy layup. Yep. Rodney Smith from the first Federal Community Bank foul line hit every part of the rim and fell out. So Rodney Smith... Trying to push this lead out to a three-possession basketball game. It sits at six right now. Smith, back of the rim, no good. So Malvern, with their opportunity to push it to three possessions, it stays a six-point game. With it is Wolfenbarker in the corner. He'll dribble out of trouble. Bolin for three. Buried wow. it. Tanner Bolin, the 6'3 senior, just drilled a three with 1.17 to play, and that's why foul shots are important. We'll be back in 30 seconds right after this timeout on 99.9. 
Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated member of INRA SIPC. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. One seventeen to play for the right to go to the Elite Eight in the Division Three Region 11 semifinal. And Shannon Thomas, what did head coach Tucci have to say? Three-point lead in the basketball. Guys, I can't repeat what Coach Tucci had to say. <laughs> he, he's just not happy that they went down the court and scored on one pass. Okay. He said, you gave up a three you're not supposed to, and you let them score off of one pass. I want more than one pass, and don't give up the three. Jay Allen Marino was double teamed so in the backcourt, gets out of trouble. Witherow's wide open in the paint. Rodney Smith had it fumbled away, but he makes the lay in. Back up to a five point lead a minute to go. Quickly the other way is Connor Lentz, the baseline jumper. Good. <laughs> Connor Lentz is on fire. He's got 30. Connor Lentz with 30. For the Northwest Mohawks, Dylan Phillips across the timeline. Rodney Smith, a three on oh! one. A beautiful move. Rodney Smith with the ball fake. Three on one break, and he laid it in. Something to note there, Jay Allen Barino did not make it back down on offense. He's rolled his ankle. He's trying to fight through it. He looks all right now, but he was slow getting back down the court. With the basketball in the backcourt is oh my Evan goodness, Neerly. Three-point shot, no good. Rebounded by Rodney Smith and Jay Allen with the basketball, and they're going to call the foul on Connor Lentz. And, and now Malvern starting to smell it. Starting to smell the Sweet 16, the Malvern Hornets. 57-52, 26.4 seconds left. Two-shot foul for Rodney Smith. Five-point basketball game. He can make this three possessions if he can knock both in, which would be huge in this ball game, Nick. We have said time and time again who gets to step up when Barino is not there offensively, and we've seen it happen a couple times as Smith clangs the first one off back wow. iron. Smith is still struggling from the free throw line. He's got 19 points, though. He does, but in, in listen, huge difference maker right now. Number 11 and number three on the basketball floor when number 10 is in foul trouble. We're going to take a quick 30-second timeout back for the second free throw right after this on Big Z Sports. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Rodney Smith, second foul shot at the first Federal Community Bank free throw line where, frankly, Malvern has kind of stunk it up here at the combo this evening. Second shot shot is good, and that was a big one. Into the front court is Wolf and Barker. Wolf and Barker tried the pass, and it was turned over. Rodney Smith with the steal, only the third turnover. Jay Allen Marino with it. We got the foul, and that is just about going to do it. A six-point game. Jay Allen Marino can ice this one for the Malvern Hornets. Hey, guys, during that last timeout, Coach Tucci used that. It's kind of the pep talk to Rodney Smith. He's like, hey, all day long, man, this is what you want. You want to go to the foul line? You want to ice it all day long? You've done this all year. Go there and make the shot. And then they, they let the players know, hey, listen, we got some team fouls to get yet. So if you think he's going to get away from you, foul him. We got team fouls to give. Jay Allen Barino just clanked the front one off. Thank uh. you, Shannon. Again, that timeout brought to you by Cush Financial Group. Trip to the sidelines brought to you by TMK Valley Propane. And 
Still can't make it a three no. possession ball game. Jay Alambrino with it. Takes two dribbles. Second shot. Rattles around the rim, no good. So he missed both of them. Does Jay Allen at the foul line. Malvern has been awful from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. Lintz for three off the side of the rim. Jay Allen skies for the rebound. That's going to do it. Three, two, and one. Malvern to the Elite Eight. 58-52, Malvern. Using a huge second half to draw away. Man, this game could have been much worse if they would have made anything from the foul line. It is just what Malvern has been able to do all season long. You know, they do not necessarily blow you away in any specific statistic. We know about that defense. We know the turnovers they can force. But even when that's not there, the Hornets find a way to pick it up somewhere else. It was not at the free throw line tonight. Where it was was the rebounding differential by far. We'll get to those stats later, but I am telling you, Malvern dominated the boards tonight, and that was the difference. I believe you as Shannon Thomas gives head coach Rick Scarberry a big hug down there. He's clapping to his fans. Shannon Thomas to head coach Dennis Tucci. Hey, Coach, what an outstanding game between two teams. But, hey, you had some kids step up tonight when one of your leaders was in foul trouble, and those kids really turned it on in the second half. So proud of my guys playing with Jay Allen out a lot of the time, and we actually increased the lead without him. And I, and I like to think we warned them down a little bit. Those threes weren't falling. And then offensively, we just made enough foul shots to put them away. Yeah, Coach Aaron, the second half, your defense got aggressive, but you couldn't get too aggressive because the whistles kind of came in bunches today. But defensively in that second half, you did what you had to do. We did, and I'm so proud of my guys. You know, we've had an un un unbelievable season. We got to get one more win. Somehow, some way, we got to get one more. All right, we'll see you Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say head coach. Dennis Tucci is a little fired up as the Malvern Hornets will advance to the Elite Eight. They will play the game that comes up next, either North Adams or Harvest Prep, on Saturday at 1 o'clock. We're going to start our, our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show and announce our McIntyre Realty Player of the Game after this timeout on Big Z Sports. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PackDrilling.com. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Finding your perfect vehicle can be frustrating. The selection process, working out a deal, the pushy salespeople. Well, Sarsha and Ford of Waynesburg takes away all of those frustrations by offering transparent pricing, a large new and pre-owned inventory, and salespeople that you'll consider a friend by the time your sale is complete. Sarsha and Ford of Waynesburg is proud to have won the Ford President's Award three consecutive years based solely on that customer satisfaction. And you can see the difference at 300 West Lisbon Street in Waynesburg or at sarshanofwaynesburg.com, where community and customers always come first.
Jeff Wallach LLC is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400? Thad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. With Big Z Sports. Welcome back to the Convocation Center. Chris Kale, Nick McWilliams, Shannon Thomas, where the Malvern Hornets will advance to the Elite Eight to take on the winner of the next game, which is North Adams or Harvest Prep. That game coming up on Saturday. Some of the team stats while we wait here on our Dumont Sporting Goods post game show for our. McInturf Realty player of the game to step out of the locker room and no rush on him. Let him celebrate with his team. Let him take a breath, Yeah, too. let him take a breath. He had a huge fourth quarter. The Malvern Hornets with 10 total team turnovers. Northwest with nine. Uh, Malvern was abysmal from the free throw line at 8 of 19, 42%. And Northwest was 8 of 12 at the first Federal Community Bank foul line at 67%. And I know you've got the individual stuff. I do have the individual stuff as for the Northwest Mohawks in the loss. What an incredible game, incredible career for senior guard Connor Lentz as he had 30 points tonight as he nailed also eight free throws. He was eight for nine from the charity stripe, also had five rebounds and three steals. Outside of him, he had a big night for Tanner Bolin, 15 points. He buried three from deep as well. The only other scoring, though, incredibly enough, you got two points from Caleb Lewis, and you got two points from Logan Wolfenbarker, and that's it, if yeah. you can believe it or not. Yeah, crazy. Absolutely uh, crazy. Actually, well, I am missing two points from some. Oh, my part, pardon me, Jay Jenkins hit one from deep, so he had three points, but that is all you're scoring for Northwest. As for the Malvern Hornets, their leading scorer tonight, it was Rodney Smith with 19 points, eight rebounds, three steals, two assists, a block, and pretty much the spark that they absolutely needed with Jay Allen Barino on the bench in foul trouble. Dylan Phillips, next leading scorer with 13 points, three rebounds, three steals as well. Barino does round out his night with 11 points, four rebounds, an assist, and a block. Mitchell Miner, he buried three from deep for nine points. He also had four rebounds and another big game for Jared Withrow. He only had four points, but he had two assists and two blocks, 11 rebounds. Speaking of rebounds, uh, Ad uh, <laughs> Adam, yeah. Chris, would you believe Malvern finished the night with 31 rebounds, both offensive and defenses? Northwest, eight. Wow. There's a huge difference in the basketball game right there is uh, the rebounding of the Malvern Hornets. And uh, I'm sure they're going to stick around and watch the next game that's being played between North Adams and Harvest Prep. And uh, Shannon waiting on our McInturf Realty player of the game to come out of the tunnel over there on the far side. And uh, looks like we'll be back here, Nick, on Saturday for the Elite Eight. Nothing better than calling a regional championship game here on Big Z Sports. No, there is absolutely nothing better. And, and as we've already said before, uh, Malvern will be taking on the winner of our next game in North Adams or Harvest Prep. 
It's going to be another great basketball matchup here from the Convocation Center. I don't really think at this point, honestly, Malvern cares who it is. They are just so thrilled yeah. to be in the regional final. I mean, you heard the emotion yeah. in Coach Tucci. And, by the way, our live stream is now live, I believe. It certainly so, is. So, uh, Casey Claxon and Clax Communications got the live stream up. So, if you want to go watch that game, if you're – just itching to see how the Malvern Hornets. You just got to drag back. You just got to drag back and watch it as it is live right now in our post game. Just drag it all the way back to the beginning and watch how the Malvern Hornets overcame a slow start in the first quarter to power back. And they went back and forth from there and then pulled away a little bit here in the fourth quarter. What a what a really good basketball game uh, you guys got to see here from the, the Convocation Center. The craziest part about it is how similar this was to their district championship. I mean, Martins Ferry was matching them blow for blow. At times, Malvern looked out of sorts, both offensively and defensively. You know, you started feeling the tension from their crowd, like, all right, are we going to get this figured out? What's going on here? But it is exactly what Coach Tucci said, I think, in the pregame. He himself said it's all going to be about second-half adjustments. Now, did Malvern blow them out? No. Do you need to blow them out in the nope. tournament? Absolutely nope. not. You have to survive Win in advance. And move on. That yep. is the name of the game when it comes to the tournament. The foul shooting is going to be a big question moving forward for Malvern. I'm sure they'll work on it. And it looks like, Shannon, you do have our McInturf Realty player of the game. And we've bragged him up enough tonight, but why don't we continue doing that? Yeah, guys, I caught up here with Rodney Smith, our McInturf Realty player of the game. Rodney? First half, you guys were just a bunch of average basketball players. One of your leaders, Jay Allen Brito, got in uh, got into a little bit of foul trouble, and uh, the guys up here want you to face this way. They want to see you pretty face. <laughs> Over here. Yeah. Come on, Rodney. <laughs> so when Jay Allen got a little bit of foul trouble, we wondered who was going to step up and be that leader, and you and Dylan Phillips took off, and then right there in the fourth quarter, man, you really turned it on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how we got to do when one of our teammates go down. We just got to keep, we got to keep playing as a team and play aggressive and play with confidence. You, uh, you started driving the paint there with a lot of confidence. You was waiting for the body contact a couple times. They just gave it to you, and you made it look easy. Yeah, yep. Just get to the right, go up strong, hopefully get the call, you know. Next time, I messed up a little bit on those free throws, but, hey, I'm going a, I'm to a shoot better next game. All right, well, congratulations, and we'll see you Saturday. Yep, yep, see you. All right, that was Rodney Smith, our, a man of few words, he but a, a man of many buckets and talents. As that kid uh, is a beast on the football field. And he, uh, he was definitely the leader on the basketball floor here tonight for Malvern. Something else that's crazy, too, with Rodney is he got all those boards. He got the block. He was doing a great job in boxing out and stuff. For the most part, where he finds himself on the baseline, the way Malvern runs defense and offense, he's going to be undersized. And he yeah. simply does not care. Yeah, he does not care. Nick, it was great doing a game with you. Let's... Let's do it again on Saturday. How about we do that? Yeah. How about we do that again on Saturday? Again, uh, Nick McWilliams, a great job. Shannon Thomas all night long doing a great job on the sidelines. Thank you for joining us from the Convocation Center at The Ohio University, where the Malvern Hornets advance to the D3 Region 11 Championship game on Saturday at 1 o'clock against either North Adams or Harvest Prep after they knocked off Northwest, the Mohawks, by a score of 58-52. Again, our McIntyre Realty player of the game, six foot two junior Rodney Smith, 19 points, eight rebounds, three steals, two assists, and a block. Again, our next broadcast coming up on Saturday from right here at the Convo. The Wood Electric pregame show going to get started around 12.30. Tip off at 1 o'clock live on 99.9 WTUZ, streaming anywhere in the world on WTUZ.com and our delayed stream on our YouTube channel, courtesy of Claxon Communications. For Casey Claxon and Logan McPeak of Claxon Communications, Natalie Holbrook taking the pictures on the sidelines. Mary Alice doing such a great job all year long. Back in the Ed Shoemaker building driving the bus. Adam Sawaski doing social media all night long. Shannon Thomas on the sidelines. And Nick McWilliams, I am Chris Kale saying so long. From the Convo, this has been a presentation of Big Z Sports on 99.9 WTUZ and Claxon Communications. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there is nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Thanks for watching this Claxon Communications production of High School Sports on the Big Z Sports YouTube channel. 
For the latest news and scores, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter at Big underscore Z Sports, and on Instagram. Don't miss any of the live stream coverage all season long by simply subscribing for free to Big Z Sports on our YouTube channel. For the best in high school sports coverage, there is only one Big Z Sports. 